Okay. This is the thermostat. And it's programmable. That's all that's required. It's not facing a southern or a western exposure. It's not on an exterior wall. This is pretty close to the middle of the house. This is an acceptable application. Coming towards the smaller bedrooms, the bedroom suite, master suite is over there. Bedroom hallway. This is the indoor air handler. Some people call it the furnace. And it is. There's the furnace right there. There's the fan that distributes all the air. Whether you just need air, like for a fan, just come over here. It has nothing to do with heat. Let's go. Fan. Fan runs. Just like that. No heat, no air conditioning, fan. Indoor air handler. The air conditioner will not work without the fan and the condensing unit outside and your evaporator coils. And your evaporator coils. And the furnace. So all this conglomeration is your indoor air handler. Yay! So what are we doing here? Changing batteries all what are we doing? This screen, when this home was built that was required. But now see how it's all packed with all that rat insulation? Well, now it doesn't breathe like it would. <clears throat> Flu doesn't have a thimble on it, like the water heater does. You'll see that. I don't know how necessary they are in this particular type of arrangement, but it doesn't have it. The flue is supposed to be held together by, it's supposed to be bolted together. You're not supposed to tape your flue together. We learn here, <clears throat> we learn here on these data plates that this system is the same age as the condens- oh, you probably haven't seen the condensing unit video yet. So it's um, 18 years old. This equipment lasts about 20. It might last, it's engineered on paper to last 20. It might last 35. But Las Vegas, you tired of that joke. Boomer humor. Okay, but anyway, the odds are, odds are, odds favor is about 14 years. So <clears throat> at 18 years old, this equipment, all of it, the one outside you're about to see the video on and this, it's all done just about everything that everybody expected it to do around here when it was installed. We got some dust forming in here. That's probably coming from your evaporator coils. Your evaporator coils, you do not have a P-trap. It's not insulated. This is insulated. They insulated that part. They knew. I see what I'm doing. So this isn't insulated, it doesn't have a P-trap, do not have a secondary drain. And you don't have to have a secondary drain, you can have an emergency switch, float switch, you have one of those, whatever. But you don't have anything. So if this drains, this is going to drain all over off the top and down all over the wood. I'm going to cause all this damage like that. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Coming along here, we got, you know, since it's draining, that corrosion all, all down in here. This gas line, this flexible gas line, is not supposed to enter the cabinet. It's supposed to be stubbed out with a solid pipe outside, and then you catch the flexible to it. You don't run the flexible inside where it can vibrate. And... So, and you also should have a sediment trap for the gas line if it was installed today. It'd be nice if we had a care and use manual. Sure would. Coming along, let's just try this while we're here. Let's turn it over to heat. I jacked up the temperature nice and high. I'm going to run it in a little bit and do carbon monoxide. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe not. Depends on what the flame looks like. This is your air filter, 16 by 25 by 1. I already took it out, I already took it out, and it, um, it's clean. Oh, I was prepared for something else. It leaks around it. There we go. Ooh, look at that blowback. The flame looks pretty good. Just had a little rough start. We got any lifting off over here? That's lifting off a little bit over on that end. 
not lifting off. When people say lifting off, it's not what I'm talking about. It's those little flares, those little dots of orange. You guys see what my eyes see? I'm gonna say it's a fair flame. I don't know. It's too much orange. I'd have a air conditioning guy look at that. That's a hint. That's what's known as a clue. That's what's known as a clue. Now this is the air return for your furnace. And it heats the air through a heat exchanger and then it broadcasts it out through these vents. This air return is not supposed to be closer than 10 feet to the furnace. Because this could spill carbon monoxide from that crazy flame that I was looking at. It could spill carbon monoxide. It's sucked up in this grill and it gets broadcast all over the house so everybody goes to sleep at the same time. Everybody goes to sleep at the same time. How do you fix that? You insulate this door. They put a little insulation here. No, you insulate the door so it's sealed every bit as good as if it was an exterior door. And that's how you deal with that. Now when you do that, you're no longer sucking air around the door so you're going to need more, more, more combustible air. So this right here is called makeup air. We really don't have combustible air. So we bring a, a pipe in from the ceiling, from the attic, and it come down about six inches from the floor, six inch wide pipe, six inches. You don't have a lot of room in here. I mean, that's how you have what it's going to take to do it right. And then you got your makeup air, and then you can seal the door. An air conditioning guy can help you work that out better than I can. So, and then I'll, I've got some more rust on the cover. I'm going to pop that back. We're going to turn some air conditioning on. So, okay, enough of that heat business. We're going to do cool. And we're going to do the temperature. We're going to take it all the way down. And we're going to check some stuff out, man. We're going to do some investigating. That'll require me closing the house up. Then I'll be muffled. <laughs>